Natural landscape features are used to manage both the quantity and the quality of the water by slowing down the rate of flow through a train of controls that begin as close as possible to the initial source. The basic philosophy is simple. To manage rainwater near to the point where it falls and, where appropriate, allow it to seep into the ground where there's no risk of polluting groundwater, a process known as infiltration. The general methods include the use of permeable surfaces, filter strips, swales, basins, ponds, and wetlands. Permeable surfaces are about as close to source control as you can get. These can be made simply from reinforced grass, graveled areas, or a variety of porous paving materials. Water flows through the surface into a permeable fill or sub-base where it can be stored, conveyed, or allowed to infiltrate the lower strata and recharge groundwater, where there is no risk to its quality. The fill traps sediments and helps clean up the runoff. Filter strips are gently sloping areas of ground covered with vegetation, such as wild grasses. Swales are long, shallow channels used to convey water slowly and allow infiltration. As stormwater washes off an impermeable surface, such as a road, the vegetation traps suspended particles in the flow, filtering it as it runs into the swale where the remaining solids are collected through sedimentation. Organic and mineral particles are then incorporated in the soil and the vegetation takes up the nutrients. Polluted sediments can be reduced by natural filtration and bacterial action in the soil. Basins and ponds can be used as the next step in the management train. Basins are usually free from water in dry weather conditions but act as a buffer to the flow during storms. Ponds, on the other hand, usually contain water throughout the year but are designed to hold more when it does rain. Ponds and basins are often used in combination. The objective is to control flow rates downstream by storing flood water and releasing it slowly over a period of hours or even weeks once the risk of flooding has passed. During this period, solids in the water settle out. Pollutants, held by the vegetation and soil, are reduced by biological activity. Here we have what is uh, a drainage feature. It's a balancing pond, but it's designed in such a way that it creates a new landscape feature on the edge of this substantial development, on the edge of Bishop Stortford. You have here a water feature which is doing a drainage job. At the far end there, you've got uh, a set of reed beds. They're actually there uh, to absorb uh, pollutants and, and, and uh, harmful organisms coming from the development itself. So they're actually purifying the water. They have great benefits for water quality as well as providing an attractive feature of this pond uh, and the development itself. Swales avoid the need for gullies and their associated maintenance costs and provide guaranteed drainage from the road surface. And instead of killing wildlife, they enhance it. Neither do suds need dangerous unsightly culverts which are expensive to build and maintain. The risks of wrong connections are reduced when there is only a single sewer to be connected to. Conventional systems with impervious catchments that increase surface water runoff contribute to flood risks. This can restrict development opportunities downstream. Put simply, they're an economic disadvantage. Systems that use infiltration, basins and ponds reduce flooding risk and enhance amenity and property values. They also reduce the pressure and stresses on existing drainage systems by reducing the load. Suds improve water quality. For example, it's estimated that half the oil that ends up in the sea comes not from major tanker incidents, but from spills, factories and car parks that are washed down surface water drains. 
or from DIY motoring enthusiasts who, through ignorance of the law and the drainage system, pour waste oil down the nearest and most convenient grate. By using these new sustainable methods to delay storm flows and treat pollution before it gets to watercourses, rivers and seas will improve. This in turn creates the opportunity for river restoration and improved amenity value. We've got the River Ravensbourne here, which has been uh, moved because uh, the Docklands Light Railway had to come in. And instead of having the long straight channel, we've now reinstated the meanders. Uh, we're actually delaying the, the rate of flow when we're actually reducing the um, rate of runoff. Uh, and so for flood risk management, it's much, much better. And this is a change from what we did before, which was we made the channel sort of shorter, straight, deep. What we're trying to do is, is mimic uh, natural systems and to use the natural systems to uh, trap the particles in the root systems of plants and to try, therefore, to improve the quality of the water that goes beyond there. So you're trying to reduce the amount of, of flow that's going off so quickly in, as it does in urban areas and you're in, trying to improve the qual quality of that water as well. The benefit of producing a river of this sort of nature is that you actually improve the habitats, you improve the range of habitat. Uh, that enables species such as birds to migrate up and down the river corridor uh, and other animals as, as well. And we're seeing sort of increased uh, species using these sort of inner urban areas. Wildlife can be enhanced not only in existing rivers but within the sud structures themselves. New ponds will replace many that are lost every year, along with their associated wildlife, providing opportunities for education and recreation. It certainly is part of the uh, school's education. An area like this is tremendous because I mean, it actually uh, enables uh, schools to, to use it as a resource to bring parties of school children to an area like this to watch its development through the course of a year, um, to uh, take specimens of course of uh, um, uh, organism out of the pond, uh, to look at the, uh, the function of the reed beds uh, at the top end, to look at the variety of birds that you have attracted to a pond like this. But children are also attracted to water. Is it safe to build ponds near to residential areas where youngsters could be at risk? This balancing lake in York was built 15 years ago and is fronted by housing. The local community has had time to consider the risks. I think it's quite a safe place for them. I'm, when I've, I'm down by the river, I've got to constantly watch them because you know, the, it's, it's deeper. I'm worried in case they do fall in, even though they can swim. But uh, been on here, I have no worries about them. There's no, there's no deep drop-offs, it gradually goes out from the edge and I think at the deepest part it's only four or five foot deep. So if, there, if, a, child, if a child was to get into difficulty, but I think it's unlikely as it's, as it's so shallow.